Greetings, Real Rambles Back Again. Today I'm going to tell you about an American drama film named, The Thinning. Spoilers to follow. Enjoy the ride. It is 2039, and the Earth has become overpopulated. The human race is on the verge of dying. The United Nations declares that all nations must annually cut their populations by 5%. Following those orders, the United States implements a rule called, The Thinning. In The Thinning, the students must attend a standardized test every year. In the test, whoever fails is executed by injecting them with a drug. The movie starts as Lena Michaels is tutoring a high school kid named Simon. Simon seems to have a hard time solving the equations, so he asks Lena for something. She takes out a box of lenses, and hands it to him. As soon as Simon wears them, he is able to solve all the math problems. Elsewhere, we are introduced to Edward Blake Redding, the son of Texas Governor Dean Redding. He sneaks out of his house at night and meets his girlfriend, Ellie Harper, in his car. Blake starts talking about the test they have the next day. Ellie is very nervous about it, but Blake assures her that she will pass. Just then, Blake's father's guard finds them, and brings Blake back to Dean's office. Dean is disappointed in Blake for sneaking out the night before such an important test. He thinks that Ellie is a distraction for Blake. The following day, it is the day of the test. Many students line up outside the school. They have to go through an intense security check before entering. Blake asks Lena for one of her study lenses, but she is out of them. Lena and her friend, Kellen Woods, stand in line to get inside. One of the students has cheats written on his arm. When he is caught, he tries to run away. The guards capture him. No one has ever been able to escape the exams or cheat on it. Inside the school, Blake and Ellie hug for the last time before entering the exam hall, and soon, the exam starts. They have two hours to complete the test. Everyone starts solving the problems on their tablets. Lena solves all of them without any problem and is the first to complete it. Her friend, Kellen, seems to be struggling. When the exam is over, they immediately get the results. The teacher in the class is calling several names who fail the exam. Students are anxious, hoping this will be over soon. Those who fail are taken by the guards. They cry, resist, and some even try to run away. The guard beats up those students who resist. Luckily, Lena, Kellen, and Blake pass. However, at the last moment, Blake's girlfriend, Ellie, is called by the teacher, and the guards take her away. Blake quickly calls his father, and asks him to help Ellie. However, his father doesn't agree, saying that the law is the same for everyone. Frustrated, he runs to save her himself. He attacks the guards and asks Ellie to run away, but to no avail. No one has been able to escape. Blake keeps trying to help Ellie, but there is nothing else he could do. It is now a year later, and 24 hours before the thinning test starts. It is Lena's little sister Corrine's very first thinning test. The doorbell rings. It is Lena's teacher, Ms. Birch, who has been taking care of Lena and Corinne like her own children since their mother's death. She tries to calm Lena down because tomorrow is Corrine's first test and Lena worries about her sister, but she assures them that everything will be fine. Meanwhile, Blake makes a video in his room. He intends to write all wrong answers in the test to teach his father a lesson. Cut to the day of the test, and Lena drops Corinne to her kindergarten. In Corinne's class, they are presented with a video animation showing the current state of the earth, so all nations must annually cut their populations by 5%. Some countries have implemented rules like allowing couples to have only one child, while others execute the older generation. In America, the government have decided to keep only the smartest ones and execute the others. These children are no exception. The children's test starts. Their teacher is saddened because some of the children are going to be executed. Thankfully, Corinne passes the test. Lena and Kellen enter the school for their test as well. The test starts and finishes in no time. Meanwhile, Governor Dean finds Blake's recording and is agitated. He calls the test manager, Mason King, and orders him to pass Blake regardless of his score. Mason switches his score with Lena, making Lena fail. The test results are in, but to everyone's surprise, Lena's name is called too. She has failed the test. Ms. Birch stops the guard as they take her, claiming that she is her best student and there must be something wrong with the system. However, the results are final and cannot be changed. She hands Lena a keycard so she can unlock the doors and escape. Blake is surprised to not have failed. The students who pass, arrive at a school party to celebrate their results. Elsewhere, Dean is giving a speech as the governor, to declare he is running for President of the United States. He boasts about their education system, as a result of their system, they manage to be the best in education among 196 countries, 
and the crime rate has decreased by 26%. Blake listens to his father's speech while at the party, then sneaks out of it. He sneaks into the hallway and beats one of the guards. He then goes into the control room. Meanwhile, Lena and the students who have failed are taken into a room and put against a wall. They are forced to remove all of their clothing for decontamination. Then, Lena and the others are taken to a room where the guards are about to execute them by lethal injection. Suddenly, Blake cuts the electricity off, making the whole school go dark. Taking this chance, the students who are about to be executed, free themselves and try to run away. But none of them succeed, except for Lena. She uses the key card her teacher had given her, and gets out of the room. Soon after, Mason comes to the room and asks for a head count. They find out that Lena is missing and start looking for her. Blake finds Lena and helps her fighting one of the guards. While talking, they realize that something was done to Blake and Lena's results. They both enter into a vent and hide. They follow the network cables to go to the server room where they can look at the results through the computer. Meanwhile, the school is still in complete lockdown due to the power failure. The news gets outside and is being broadcasted all over the state. The parents outside are getting concerned. Governor Dean calls Mason to ask him about the situation. Meanwhile, the vents below Blake breaks, making him fall into the swimming pool below. Lena jumps after him. She brings him out of the water, but he is not breathing. Lena gives him CPR and somehow manages to save him. Blake and Lena change to some clothes they find in the pool's lockers. They then continue to go through the vents and reach the server room, but a guard stands in front of the door. Moreover, Lena's keycard falls down the vent in front of the guard. He doesn't notice the card but now she has to get it back somehow. Her plan is to go to the science lab and join a string with a magnet to fish the key through the vent, so they head down to the lab to retrieve the equipment needed. However, in the lab, they make a slight noise causing the guard to approach the lab. They quickly try to escape, Lena manages to get back to the vents but Blake is stuck hiding in the lab. Lena moves through it to fish the keys. She successfully manages to get it up halfway, when suddenly a guard catches it. But it turns out that it is Blake disguised as a guard. He had beaten the guard and put his clothes on. Shortly, the guard the two of them had attacked earlier tells Mason about them. He reveals that Lena has a key card with her. Mason gathers all the teachers together suspecting that someone has given it to their students. When Ms. Birch is in the room with other teachers, she flirts with another teacher and manages to take his key card. Mason continues checking the teachers for their key cards and IDs. Birch saves herself by showing them the card. Since the other teacher doesn't have his, Mason threatens him to tell them where Lena is. However, he insists he doesn't know anything as Mason beats him. Lena finally gets to the server room. She opens the computer using the key card but Mason has it protected with a password. She then texts Kellen who is good at hacking to provide her with the access. After some time, Kellen receives Lena's text. He helps her to get through Mason's computer. Lena then searches for her results and finds out she got 98% but still failed while Blake got 15% and passed. She does more research and finds out that Ellie too had gotten 88% and failed, while others who had less marks than her passed. Lena realizes that the grading system is rigged, and the governor has been failing whoever he wishes to. Lena sends a file with the rigged grades to Kellen, but soon, the power is back on, and Mason sees that she is in the server room. Lena realizes this and runs out. However, Mason catches her almost immediately. Blake, on the other hand, is still in disguise. He is with the students who have failed. He orders the guard to take them to the recreational hall with the other students. But the guard refuses, so they get into a fight. The guards restrain him and find out his identity. Just then, Kellen receives Lena's message and is surprised to see the rigged results. Kellen is friends with a news anchor, so he quickly emails it to the news channel. The reports broadcast the news showing the receipts of the altercation and the results. After the photos are leaked, the governor is called by his party head who threatens to take his presidential candidacy back. Unwilling to let that happen, Dean Redding throws all the accusations at Mason, and pretends that he is innocent. He tries to prove this, so he has no choice but to execute all of those who actually failed, including his own son, Blake. At the school, Mason and the guards take Lena to the thinning room to execute her and the others. Blake is there too. Mason calls Dean to ask him if they should proceed to execute the students, but Dean tells him to stop. He wants the students who have actually failed to be executed, including his own son. The guards free Lena and other students who have actually passed the test. Lena kisses Blake, but the guards take him and the rest who have failed. They execute them by injecting them with a drug. As the lockdown ends, Lena is reunited with her younger sister, Corinne, and Ms. Birch. 
Cut to a few hours later, we see the bodies of the executed students being taken underground in an elevator. The students begin to move, revealing that the drug they were injected with is a sleeping drug. They stop when they reach a factory-like place. It is filled with goods being produced by the tech company Ashura Global. Many people work in the factory. Just then, Blake is surprised to notice that one of them is actually Ellie, his girlfriend. This indicates that the students who are supposed to be executed are actually brought underground to work as slaves for a multi-million dollar company. This was all planned by the government as a strategy to get free labor. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.